Hey everybody, it's the 3D Printing Professor, and today we go into depth a little bit about how FFF or FDM 3D printers do their thing. So the FFF or FDM 3D printing process are both the same thing, but they're how these 3D printers work. They're what these 3D printers are. And the whole process starts with actually a piece of software called a slicer. Now, the slicer can be running on a computer that's embedded in the 3D printer, but to save money, most of these 3D printers use your computer for this process. You have to run the slicer on your computer. And the slicer is a piece of software that takes a 3D model and turns it into the instructions that the 3D printer is going to follow. We call those instructions G-code. Now, the slicer... How it does what it does is it takes a 3D model and it slices it. It takes a look at it in a layer by layer. It takes a cross section of the model, looks at it and goes, hmm, how would I turn that into something real? Well, I'd have to draw around the outside first and maybe I'd draw around the outside two or three times and then I'd have to draw inside to fill that in, just color it all in with the with the little nozzle of plastic and it comes up with the instructions. Go here, go here. Meanwhile, feed plastic. Go here, feed plastic. Go here, feed plastic. And if it has to move, it says pull the plastic back, move, and then feed the plastic back in. It has to coordinate the entire dance that your 3D printer does. Now because slicers are so in-depth, we're going to go into them a little bit more in the next video, but let's move on to what happens when those instructions get to your 3D printer. Once the slicer is done figuring out this whole dance, those instructions, that G-code, has to be passed to the 3D printer. And it does that either through a USB cable or you can write it onto a SD card or USB stick and plug it into the printer or the really cool ones will do it over Wi-Fi. Then once those instructions are in the 3D printer, the 3D printer has a very limited computer that just follows those instructions and it does so by moving a movement system. It has a system of motors designed to move in three directions, up and down, left and right, forward and backward. Usually, there are exceptions, but this is the general case. Up and down, left and right, forward and backward. This X, Y, and, and Z movement system, so usually the X goes sideways, the Y goes towards and away from you, and the Z goes up and down. Though I do have a video talking about how sometimes there's some debate about which one should be which, but in 3D printing, that's generally the case. Now, sometimes the movement system moves the build plate back and forth and the nozzle goes up and down and left and right. There's the three movements. Sometimes the build plate stays still and just moves down while the nozzle moves around in X and Y. And I've seen some where the build plate holds still and the nozzle is somehow moved X, Y, and Z all at the same time. Those are usually delta printers and the like, but there's a lot of ways to do that. And the whole point of this movement system is to move the build plate around in, re in relation to the hot end, that little nozzle. So the next part that we're going to talk about is the hot end. The hot end is where the plastic comes out of, and it's just a little nozzle with a little hole in it attached to a heater element that gets it nice and hot and a temperature sensor to make sure it's not getting too hot. So the hot that's all the hot end is. It's a little nozzle which focuses the plastic filament to it, gets it nice and hot, and then pushes the plastic filament into it. So the next thing we'll talk about is the plastic filament. FFF 3D printers use plastic generally to do what they're doing and that plastic has been prepared by turning it into a thin uh, uh, noodle of plastic. Now these come in usually two standard sizes. There's 1.75 millimeter which is these ones or 3 millimeters which are actually usually 2.85 millimeters but your 3D printer knows the difference between them. If your 3D printer is set up to use one of these it probably can't use the other one. Though there are 3D printers that can handle either one of them, which is super cool. This plastic is wound up on a spool and it unrolls off of the spool as it gets pulled in by the feed system, which is the next thing that we're going to talk about. 
The feed system is another motor which pulls the filament in. Usually it's got some sort of toothed gear associated with it, as well as something to push the filament against that toothed gear to pull it. Some of them have gears to increase the torque or increase the speed or decrease the torque, whatever they feel they need to do. But somehow or another, they drive the filament into the hot end. Now, some of these feed systems are very close to the nozzle and they're carried around with the movement system and some of the feed systems are very far away from the nozzle. It, it is good to know where your feed system is in relation to the nozzle. Moving it away from the nozzle means that the nozzle, the hot end, is the only thing moving around and it can be very light but it relies on the rigidity of the plastic, that that plastic is stiff enough that when it pushes it over here, it goes through a tube and produces force on the other end, pushing it out of the hot end. If you're using a material which is too soft, like a flexible filament or something like that, that sort of system isn't ideal. It can still work, but you have to make sure that between the feed system and the nozzle, there's no gaps in your system, or the softer filament will just go squishing out in the wrong direction. It happens. So we've talked about how the slicer prepares the model, how the movement system moves things around, how the hot end squirts the filament out and how the feed system feeds it into there. So now let's talk about where it all goes in the end, your build plate. The build plate may be the most important part of your 3D printer as far as the success of your 3D prints goes because it's where the prints are going to be deposited. It's a flat surface that the print, that the, the print head the nozzle has to move around in relationship to. And that build plate needs to needs to hold onto the print and hold it in place until the print is done and then release it. Some build plates are heated, some build plates are not. Some people use hairspray and glass for their build plate. Some people use exotic materials. I happen to like build tack, but there's a lot of different options for sticking your plate and being able to release it. That build plate, if it releases too soon, your print will fall off and it will fail. In fact, if any part of this system, from the slicer to the movement system to the hot end, if the movement system is too loose or the hot end has a bad sensor on it or a bad heater element on it, if the filament is not consistent, it gets too wide or too thin, all of these can contribute to a bad print. And so if your print is bad, it helps to know the whole process so you can know where to start looking for it. Did your build plate hold on to it? Well, then maybe it was the feed system. Maybe your slicer is telling your feed system to feed through too much or not enough plastic and the whole thing is going to fail. I thank you very much for watching this. As always, with all of these 3D Print 101 videos, if you would like more information about it, be sure to hit up my blog where I'm doing a complete write-up on each one of these with detailed information. And if this has been useful to you, go ahead and like it, share it, let other people know about it, and you can even support me if you want. I'd love to have your support, but even if you don't, I appreciate your view. Leave a comment. Let me know if I missed anything or if you have any other question. As always, safety first. I'll see you next time.